Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and in today's episode I'm going to show you guys another really cool tool to help you increase the immersion of your flight simulation using any window that you have available. Stick around you're going to find out how. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future guides that come along down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below and thank you to all of my current subscribers. All right, guys, so the app we are going to be taking a look at today is called Simbox. Simbox is an application that allows you to control your autopilot, lights, and your radio stacks from any portable device that you have. So and if it has a web browser, you can use it. There's also an app on the iOS store. There's also an app on the Google uh, Play store. Uh, so you can use your cell phones. You can use a... Uh, portable touchscreen, you can use Kindles, you know, anything that you have, you can use, and that will give you the option of uh, using this particular piece of software. Now, they've got their own YouTube video here, guys. I'm just helping out a little bit further and uh, giving you guys a little bit better or a further review, not better. So now they've got some very specific profiles in the works, guys. Now, obviously, this application is going to continue to be developed as time goes on. But you can see they have specific applications for the Fly-By-Wire A32NX, the uh, uh, default uh, Airbus A320, and then as well as the uh, PMDG 737. Now, these are just, again, this is all work in progress. Things are going to be increasing as time goes on. And you also have the ability to create your own profiles. I'm not going to go through that part yet today uh, as there's still more learning that I have to do. Now, you can also use with a physical encoder as well, whether you have, uh, what's that uh, really cool uh, tool you can purchase, the uh, Knobster, or if you have your own uh, encoder that you have made, you know, very similar to what you'd find like at the Class Echo. Now, uh, the one thing that I really do appreciate about this particular app is, as they're saying here, size doesn't matter. Go ahead and have fun with that one, guys. And um, so one of the cool things about this is that it scales to any resolution that you use it, and it scales very, very nicely. And I really appreciate that fact because uh, you don't have to worry about any kind of conflict happening from screen to screen. So the other really cool thing about this is you purchase the license of the application that is running on your desktop. So for example, here's what that looks like right here. You buy the license for this. This is what you actually pay for, okay? And then from here, you can have this running on multiple other um, devices that you have. It really doesn't matter. You can have it running on more than one device at a time. Uh, so that is really cool. One of the other really th cool things that sets this one apart from some of the others that are out there uh, is it does not require any other third-party software. So you install the Simbox control panel here that you're seeing on the screen, and that is it. You do not need SPAD.next. You do not need, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, FSUIPC, you don't need any of that. Okay, so that is one of the really cool things about this particular app. It's completely standalone and integrates with the simulator. So now let's go ahead and talk about uh, some of this stuff in action, which makes it pretty slick. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm just going to get the, some of these windows off the screen here. So right now I'm using this in a browser format, as you guys can see here. Now what I'm going to do, if you're going to bear with me here, is I'm actually going to move this down to a touch screen. So give me just a second and I'll show you guys some different usage. All right, so now that we're airborne, let's go ahead and start playing around with this a little bit. So for example, we are already selected on heading, but let's go ahead and activate the heading mode. You can see the aircraft now turning over to our current bearing, which is 360 or heading, but let's go ahead and change that. And I'm just gonna move this slider down the bottom. It does speed up, as you can see, depending on how fast you move it. Or you can really slowly dial that in. So that part's pretty nice here. Now let's go ahead and set an altitude target here. Altitude target. Let's set an altitude. Let's see, what's our current altitude at? We're 7,400 feet. Go ahead and set it to 10,000, shall we? Let's go 
back it up a little bit. There we go. All right. And now we got our altitude, but now let's figure out how we're going to get there. So let's go ahead and engage vertical speed and let's send it up. Yeah, let's take her up a bit faster than that, shall we? There we go. Increase that throttle a little bit. Oh, look. Got on contrails up ahead. Okay, and then so next, one of the other neat things that I really enjoy about this. Now, obviously, you can trigger your nav mode and your approach mode as well. Go over to your radio panel. And the radio panel works just as well. So you now have a top slider, which will move one set of frequencies which is your decimals and then you have the bottom slider which will move your whole numbers and you can simply swap through your different radios so this is really handy uh, for managing your uh, radio input oops got my torque a little high and then we move over to the lights panel so let me get it uh, to where we can see that on the sim so let's go ahead and turn the taxi light on there's taxi landing lights now we don't really have a beacon light for this aircraft so that doesn't really apply but that's the other cool thing is it knows that but for example we could turn the strobe light off okay let's turn all the lights off and just with a very simple touch you got a few settings you can enable the virtual knob if you uh, for example like myself you don't have something like the knobster let me go ahead and move this uh, screen so you guys can see it just dawned on me I'm glad I caught that just a minute here. All right, so that'll be close enough for what we're doing here. All right, and so in the settings, we only have enable haptics and virtual knobs. So, for example, if you're using a cell phone or a kin or an, uh, like an Android pad, something that has a vibration to it, uh, you can actually enable the haptic feedback on contact. So it is a very simple application in the aspect of what is capable of doing. But remember, the idea behind this one is strictly for immersion purposes. Okay, the idea behind it is to uh, provide you with a much better and more fluid way of managing the autopilot lights and uh, radio system, especially the radios. The radios goes a long way. Now, one of the things that I do wish that I could do, for example, here is now keep in mind I'm on the browser I want to make that very clear all the way also guys that I am using a web browser for this particular demonstration normally I would be doing this for example on my uh, Android tablet um, in which case the scaling is significantly better but if I wanted to what I could do is come down to this display here I do want to show you guys something real quick uh, come on I gotta find it. this is one of the problems with going monitor crazy like I have all right, there we go. Is if we actually reduce the monitor there, the window there, you can actually make everything a bit easier to see. Makes it a little weird, a little backwards. Again, this product is still very much so in development. The developer is going to be seeing this video, so he'll be seeing this behavior the same way that you guys have. But this definitely gives you a much better look of the, for example, the radio system. And now what's happened is that our two sliders are a bit more scaled so it makes that a bit easier to manage uh, down at the bottom there so a lot of really cool features to this there really are um, let me go ahead and back that back down the way I had it because after this video I will be putting things back to the way they were and I'll be using this on the tablet and the only reason why guys why I didn't record it on the tablet demonstrate it's a little trickier transferring the video back and forth from the tablet to the PC uh, and so that I also wanted to make sure that you emphasize the fact that you have option here I think I might have over torqued this again I did the option that you have available here is also very very much so something to keep in mind uh, there is an ability later on uh, to um, actually is already an ability to create some profiles uh, the control panel automatically updates itself which is very nice you have an update option and so it doesn't automatically update itself I should say it alerts you when there is an update available um, and there are other plugins and things like that that will be able to work with it later on now one of the only things that you have to do guys when you grab this if you decide to pick this up is uh, you'll see here on your toolbar all you have to do is click this that is it there's no menu that pops up but I can disable it or enable it and it's that fast so like you guys saw that on the screen there it disconnects and sorry it probably would help if you guys saw that too let me move that out of the way so you guys have seen the disconnect now let me show you the toolbar button that would probably be helpful 
So let me get that out of the way, and let's go back into the sim. There we go. This is the toolbar. So there you go. On and off. So very, very easy to use the, uh, here, guys. Very, 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 very uh, comfortable application and uh, adds a lot of immersion and definitely is going to enhance your autopilot radio and lighting experience. I would say those are definitely the three main critical items when it comes to these applications and being able to function with those particular pieces because those are the most challenging, especially when you're dealing with mouse and keyboard. So. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the description below or comments below. Excuse me I would love to hear you guys feedback on this application and what you guys think of course a link to it If you guys are interested in purchasing it can be found down in the description below the uh, Developer also has a discord channel guys that you guys want to check out if you have any questions or concerns uh, He's been very very responsive very good guy to talk to I've been very impressed by that So as always guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found something new and useful I love bringing you guys new toys tools, etc uh, Seeing how much of your money I can get you guys to spend <laughs> I shouldn't be the only one going broke on flight simulation. So as always, guys, stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.